So I just made myself some zucchini cacao oats or zotes. I've shown how I make this before. I showed um, a little bit on Saturday and I have a dedicated recipe, but I just used one of the uh, four Siggy hot cacao uh, mixes. And uh, then I added a uh, half a scoop of this uh, plant-based protein. Um, so that's what I'm gonna have. I also put in, I made the oatmeal in water, but I also put in a little bit of uh, homemade cacao almond milk. And I made this in my soy bella again, and I've really been loving it. It's just cacao powder and almonds and a little bit of stevia, stevia, stevia. I got a new um, cherry blossom water bottle from YesStyle because I've been making so much non-dairy milk, almond milk, peanut milk, sunflower seed milk, that I like to have a few different types on hand. So I got another one of these and uh, it does settle a little bit, separate a little bit out like the cacao powder, but you just shake it and it's good to go. Well, hey guys, what's up? It's the end of the day and I'm actually here at an intersection and this drives me batty when people do this. They pull into the intersection and so they're stuck there because of traffic and then the light changes and no one can go. It's like, I mean, really? Why are you doing that? You're not helping anyone, including yourself. Anyways, uh, it is errand day. I'm headed out to Costco and Crow Hair this morning. Who is loving the Blogilates 100 Booty Routine uh, series? The 100 Challenge? This morning I did the clamshell one and I did it with resistance bands. When I first started doing it, I was like, oh, this isn't too bad. Oh my goodness, 100 of anything can be exhausting, but that with the resistance band was a workout for the rear. Uh, so yeah, I'm loving that. I'm not doing it daily, so I'm pretty behind in the whole series because I like to sprinkle in the abs and the, the arms in the morning. The workout that I do in the morning is not like my full workout. It's just like a little toning, get up and get moving thing that I do anywhere from five to 10 minutes. It's just a YouTube video. And uh, at night I go to the gym and I do like cardio and more weights and stuff. But yeah, I've really been loving that and uh, using it with the resistance band. See, here I am again. Now the, the light has changed, but we've got all of these people. Anyways, fortunately I have you guys to keep me company while I, while I twiddle my thumbs at this red light. Uh, anyways, yeah with the resistance bands, it really amped it up. Those were those were a solid investment from Target, the Champion C9 or whatever resistance bands. I think they were like, I wanna say like nine bucks for the three of them. Honestly, I only used the, the, uh, the black one is the, the one with the most resistance. I only use that one because I don't, every time I think to use them, I wanna use a higher resistance. I never really know what workouts to do with the lower resistance. Maybe some things like just for ankle strength. I don't know. But uh, yeah. Anyways, speaking of rear ends, I don't know how we got on this tangent, but uh, skincare, taking it back to skincare, um, if you happen to be plagued by breakouts on your rear end, and what makes me think of that is the shorts I've been wearing lately are um, to work out in in the morning and sometimes I even sleep in them. They're like these little bicycle shorts that I get on Fabletics. And um, so those can, those can kind of worsen or precipitate butt acne and whatnot just because they're they're not super breathable. Those I haven't had any issue with. But anyways, what I'm getting at is when I've got those and knowing that I was going to be wearing them, I've started doing um, benzoyl peroxide uh, lather to acne prone areas on my body like back and rear end. I've started doing that again. I don't know why. I, I had stopped for a while. I started doing that. I can't go, buddy. He's, he's mad at me because I'm not pulling forward, but there's like a ton of people here. I can't just pull forward, I will run into this person. <laughs> Maybe he's mad at them for doing this, but anyways. Yeah, so I've been lathering the benzoyl peroxide to um, acne prone areas on my body in the shower. I don't, I, I'm not going with like, in, I don't know, 
since I was maybe in college, I haven't had body acne, but I've been doing the benzoyl peroxide thing intermittently throughout my life since that time. And I think it's really kept it in check because with working out and sweat and whatnot, you know, you can, you can definitely uh, have little flares of body acne and, and folliculitis. So yeah, I totally recommend the, the uh, Panoxyl uh, wash lather there and just leave it in place in the shower for about 10 minutes not 10 minutes like two to three minutes i mean 10 minutes is excessive two to three minutes and then rinse it off it will reduce the burden of um uh, staph bacteria on the surface of your skin that you may have picked up in the gym that can lead to just uh, a just you know can trigger acne like breakouts but can lead to a frank folliculitis um, and also will reduce, the other thing that it will reduce is the burden of uh, pterosperum yeast on your skin. So if you are somebody who suffers from tinea versicolor, those uh, light and dark uh, patches uh, related to that little yeast, I have a video on it. Benzoyl peroxide will also reduce the burden of that yeast in those areas. So that is, that is like a good maintenance body routine uh, for for area, I just target it to, to certain areas because it's super drying. Panoxyl though, their overall formulation, I mean, they really they really are the best. They really have nailed it so that uh, of any any way to use benzoyl peroxide, I find that's the only, that's the only, one of the few benzoyl peroxide products that uh, is not dry, super drying uh, when used in the shower as a lather in particular. But yeah, we'll cut down on that. And also another great use of it, um, for those of you who um, are trying to control or downregulate body odor, lather it under your armpits in the shower and let it sit on there like an armpit mask and rinse it off, of course, because it'll cut down on some of the bacteria on, in that area. The bacterial flora in the armpits, you know, is a lot more jiving than other areas of the body. Um, so it'll cut down on some of that excess and that's what leads to body odor it's not sweat per se um is the breakdown of sweat by those bacteria so that will really help in the journey against body odor more so than a natural deodorant natural deodorants i can't stand you guys i'm sorry they i feel like they just prey on misunderstanding of the concept of like sweat and body odor. They don't do anything to reduce sweat output and they don't do anything to reduce bacterial burden on the skin. So they don't work. <laughs> They're just perfume in irritating vehicles. So I hate, I hate the natural deodorant market. Um, and you know, I feel like it preys on, on uh, people wanting to avoid aluminum because it can be irritating. Aluminum is not dangerous, but it can be irritating for people. And the natural deodorant market kind of preys on that, that population with something that is 10 times worse, honestly. Yeah, Schmitz, check out the comments in my TJ Maxx video. It's still going strong where people are like, oh my God, that deodorant nearly put me in the hospital. It was so bad. Um, so yeah. Using benzoyl peroxide though, you know, if you're trying to go aluminum free, uh, using a benzoyl peroxide wash is, is a smarter step in the direction to cutting down on body odor related to, be, you know, sweat than those natural deodorants. Those natural deodorants are nothing but perfume um, and they can cause some irritating rashes, particularly in the axilla, the armpit, where you have moisture from sweat and you have skin on skin contact, occlusion. Oh my God, it's begging for, it's begging for, for an issue. So yeah, yeah, that's my little plug for benzoyl peroxide and panoxyl, I swear, is, is one of my favorites. Um, you know, another ingredient that you can also utilize, uh, for these same things, just Replace everything I said with uh, chlorhexidine, hippie cleanse, can also do the same thing. Uh, so if you don't have access to uh, benzoyl peroxide, hippie cleanse, it's, it goes by the brand name hippie, hippie cleanse, hip to the hip. Um, hippie cleanse uh, is chlorhexidine. It will, it will achieve some of the same milestones uh, in, uh, in your skin, body skin care journey for those, those issues. Uh, so that's another one, uh, Hibiclens. 
Now see, here we are again. We're at another light and people are doing the same thing. I don't get it. Like, red light means stop, green light means go. <laughs> but it's an intersection. You don't hang out in the intersection unless you're going <laughs> to the destination. Unless there's a light at the end of the tunnel, meaning you know you're gonna get through the intersection safely. Don't go out there. Don't go there. Natural deodorant and, and rolling stops. Two things that I am I am just on a on a mission to shut down today, I guess. And then here we go. Here's another driving hazard. Uh, the little green arrow of this oncoming traffic clearly went away like way before the last three cars swerved through the intersection. Hazard is driving. So funny story, you guys, or funny ism. I um I've had the same camera for vlogging my whole YouTube career. I've replaced it several times. Like I've repurchased it. I mean they don't they don't live indefinitely. They start like getting twitchy with the focus and whatnot. And I really push it. So thank you guys for tolerating more autofocus. Um, but anyways, I love this particular camera. It's the only one I've ever vlogged with. I know every YouTuber uses like some kind of, uses like a Canon to vlog with, uh, but I use a Sony and I love it. But you know, I have never bothered to learn any of the settings or anything. I just put it on auto and go. Um, but I have you guys on this movie setting. <laughs> Look at me. Spielberg over here. I have you guys on the movie setting. I've had the entire vlog footage has been on this movie setting. So I don't know. Do you see a difference? I think maybe the main difference is that um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't go into standby mode. As, it doesn't shut off as quickly. Perhaps I'm not sure. Hopefully, movie mode doesn't mute the mute the audio. That would be terrible. I get I import all the footage only to figure out that this new setting that I think I've discovered is muted, and this entire video is just a silent film. <laughs> you guys would be like, um, Have you guys tried the Impossible Burger at Burger King? Um, I have not. I am not a fan of Beyond Meat whatsoever. I think it tastes like bad breath. Uh, and I don't know, maybe if you, uh, if you are transitioning to veganism, it, it tastes better to you. But I'm just like, oh my God, this tastes terrible. And it does this weird thing um, every time I've had it. Where, I mean, I guess it's because it's like made out of pea protein. It's super granular, such that like it's crispy and solid on the outside, but then when you bite into it to chew it, not only does it taste like bad breath, but then it dissolves into this sandy consistency that's just not appealing whatsoever. So I don't like Beyond. I haven't tried Impossible though. I mean, I'm not like a huge fan of a lot of the mock meats because I mean, I wasn't really a big burger eater when I was an omnivore so I'm like not really seeking to replace that um I miss like ice cream but a lot of vegan most vegan ice cream I'm content with so uh you know I just miss like certain locations that I enjoy going to don't have a vegan option like certain soft serve places don't have a vegan option and when I say vegan option I'm not talking about sorbet because that stuff is um, I do not like sorbet, um, but anyways, yeah, have no, I, I'm not really into them, but I'm curious, you know, I kind of want to try it. Mostly, I see all the videos on YouTube of people trying it, so I want to try it. And when I was, when I was an omnivore, I, like, never really ate fast food that much, but obviously, you know, growing up, I would eat fast food time to time, like, every, like, every American. I mean, it's kind of hard to go your entire life without ever eating fast food. I suppose it's possible, you know, um, but anyways, yeah, I have had my fair share of Happy Meals and whatnot, but Burger King, I always thought their burgers were superior to McDonald's. I mean, they at least were, um, maybe it's because they were flame broiled or what have you. I just always thought that they were much better. So, I don't know, I'm kind of intrigued by the 
my the impossible burger i would like to see though a non like mock meat option like a i don't know just a legit ve veggie burger or beans tofu you think fast food chains will ever get tofu i mean i've had a mame a lot of the times but tofu that'd be cool i feel like that though for a restaurant business is more of a hazardous ingredient because of soy allergies you know you kind of have to pick pick and choose like who are you gonna you want to hit as broad of a demographic with a new product probably as possible like if you put soy in it the soy allergic people can't eat it although there's like soy in 99 percent. what am i talking about mcdonald's burger king they don't care about soy allergies who am i joking with anyways i'm here at Costco has this OXO 12-piece pop food storage container set on sale for $60. I'm sort of tempted to get it because my pantry, you guys, is shameful. Um, I mean, it's like, <laughs> uh, it's a disaster. My pantry and uh, yeah, but I don't know. I don't have anything really that is that size, so I feel like some of these would be wasted with my things. I, I should just stick to, I do well with mason jar storage. I should get some more mason jars. All right, unfortunately, Costco was out of the frozen rice cauliflower, but I definitely grabbed another bag of the stir, fr stir fry vegetable blend. I love this stuff so much. I have this thing where I make a slow cooker soup every night with a different protein, which is usually either tofu or some sort of bean and a bunch of veggies. And I just let it slow cook like while I'm in the gym. And by the time I get out of the gym and out of the shower, then it's ready. But to cool it off, I throw in frozen veggies and um, then it comes to eating temperature quickly. And these are so good. Even the mushrooms, which, you know, you wouldn't think frozen mushrooms would be um, that palatable. They're, they're good. Um, and the water chestnuts are divine. Uh, they did get in a new variant of rice cauliflower and I don't discriminate and I'm open to all versions of cauliflower I can get. I was intrigued to try this, although I don't imagine it's going to be a staple. It's a little, it's costly and honestly kind of excessive, but given they were out of the frozen stuff, I figured why not try this out? It's the Earthly Choice better for it's better for you pouches. You get six pouches. I think it's like 10 bucks. It's not cheap. Uh, and it's just rice cauliflower and you can nuke it in the microwave. You guys know I like to put cauliflower in my oatmeal, either zucchini or cauliflower, so I figured those would be convenient. I got some more celery sticks there with the, uh, the challenge date, I call it. Like, like, see if you can finish me by then. I'm like, oh yeah, bring it on. I will inhale this very quickly. I go through celery at an alarming rate. <laughs> it just tastes good. Uh, of course, I got another bag of Boscovich spinach. This this haul, by the way, is pretty much all, is actually all produce. Uh, I have tons of tofu, beans, and nuts galore. And uh, I also have some uh, uh, textured vegetable protein, so don't you worry about those things. Uh, this is just all produce. All right, I also got four bag, five bags of radishes. Love star fruit, and they got a ton of it in at Kroger, so I went ahead and got some of those. Uh, I got more zucchini at Kroger this week instead of Costco because it was looking really, really superb. Uh, I haven't purchased uh, turnips in a while, and they got uh, these, uh, like a large quantity of these smaller size turnips in. So I went ahead and stocked up on those. I just chopped these up into little pieces and put them in the slow cooker for my nightly soup along with the protein and like some zucchini, for example. I also got some cucumber or three. Um, I'm always on the fence with cucumber from Kroger because it can be a little woody in the interior. So I just got three, but I have some dried dill. I think I'm gonna make a little cucumber dill mambo combo. I figured that'd be a delish. I got a whole head of regular cauliflower and I got two things of cilantro. Always enjoy that. I fortunately do not have that terrible gene polymorphism where it tastes like soap. I pity those of you out there who have that, that deadly affliction. Um, I also got some parsnips. These have been so sweet and delicious. 
I'd uh, rather been enjoying them. Again, they get chopped up and thrown into the slow cooker uh, with some onion. I got two there. And I got two heads of cabbage as per usual. This is my one non-produce item. I got some white wine vinegar this week. I was looking for rice wine vinegar, but unfortunately I could only find rice wine vinegar that was flavored and had like invert cane syrup added to it. I was like, I don't want that. I was looking in the wrong section. I was looking in the vinegar section. This is one thing I hate about Kroger. They have all of these subsections and you know, you can really end up like chasing stuff around in there like some sort of uh, Pac-Man maze. Like they have, I don't know, they have more of a dedicated authentic ethnic food section with like a little Asian like <laughs> continent. And I'm sure it's hidden in there. But uh, yeah, they, then they take the flavored rice wine vinegars and put them in the vinegar side. It's just confusing. But anyways, I ended up with white wine vinegar. So that was a lot of talking to say, hey guys, I got vinegar. But yeah, that's everything I got. Like I said, pretty much all produce this week. I've been really doing well with my um, homemade almond milk. And uh, so yeah, just stocked up on produce. Ah, it's like 98 degrees out here, starting to feel like fall. Anyways, guys, that is everything that I got at the grocery store this week. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for the car vlog and me blabbing at you. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.